My name is Yoko Nomura. I'm a professor at Queen's College Graduate Center, CUNY, and I have a secondary appointment with Mount Sinai. I'm a developmental psychopathologist, and I study uh, in utero effect of stress on children across the lifespan. I'm Jeff Newcorn. Uh, I'm a professor of psychiatry and pediatrics at Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. I'm the director of the Division of ADHD and Learning Disorders, and uh, my, my work is about uh, ADHD and uh, how it's diagnosed and how it presents across the lifespan and how it's treated. We took advantage of this horrific natural disaster, Superstorm Sandy. Uh, when Superstorm Sandy hit metropolitan New York back in 2012, uh, I happened to be there uh, trying to be trained in conducting epigenetically informative developmental study. So I was at the right place with a right skill set, uh, with a infrastructure. So we followed uh, pregnant women through our pregnancy and followed their children. And the finding are uh, mind boggling. Uh, risk of various disorders, various childhood disorder are all elevated, anxiety disorders, depression, uh, disruptive behavior disorder, and attention deficit disorders. What's more striking was there was a gender specific risk. I just wanna amplify something that you said before. I mean, you were already doing this uh, longitudinal work and you know, it was you really, um, you know, reorganize some of the uh, ways of analyzing the data around exposure to Superstorm Sandy. So, like you said, you had the mechanism in place to start tracking, tracking these outcomes, and and you're able to follow these women and their and their uh, children uh, into the preschool years. And and uh, importantly, using structured diagnostic interviews that allowed allowed to. Uh, to actually look at the emergence of, of um, psychiatric disorders in the population of children and, and being able to compare those who are exposed and those who are not exposed in utero. Among boys, it was uh, ADHD and disruptive uh, disorders, so oppositional and conduct disorders. And among girls, it was, was anxiety and depressive disorders. And so that, that was really a, a very interesting and important finding. So we have look at diagnosis, which are really prevalent among preschool aged kids. So we focus on anxiety disorder, depression, uh, depressive disorders, and disruptive behavior disorder, and attention deficit disorders. Those are the four categories we focus on. And we have look at disruptive behavior, which Jeff is going to describe. Yeah. So. Uh, disruptive behavior. So typically following directions or being, you know, um, uh, uh, not being able to uh, listen to uh, what adults want you to do or being defiant uh, or um, you're having uh, violations of age appropriate norms in the case of, you know, very young children, being able to stay with a group, being able to stay in your own space, uh, not, not touching other people, um, and you know, for hyperactivity items, which are typically very prominent in very young children with ADHD, you know, just moving around a lot, um, not being able to stay in your seat, not being able to keep your mind on the thing that is uh, is going on, and uh, and uh, you know, being inattentive, you know, uh, not doing circle time. You know, I can't I can't stay with a group. I'm going to wander around, and uh, and uh, so those are those are behaviors that even early on, you can begin to pick up. Uh, although it's important to understand that that there's a wide range of normality in this age group. You see a lot of these problems in normal development and, and some of them go away and, and, and others persist. But but th these are the kids that were having the most problems with it and it was noteworthy that the rates were so high. This is an area which we struggle still. Uh, it's because uh, frequency and magnitude of hurricane is increasing due to this climate change. What study have found is children who are exposed to Superstorm Sunday in utero 
uh, have an earlier, much earlier onset of psychiatric disorders. And the risk elevated, magnitude of risk is elevated. That is clear and uh, that is substantial. Well, I think there are two ways to think about it. One is what could one do in the moment? And the second is what one could do afterwards. So in the moment is really hard, right? Because natural disasters come on unexpectedly, or even if they're predicted, the, you know, how it's going to play out and the way in which it's going to impact you is, you know, it's going to be uh, uh, highly variable. And it's, uh, you know, obviously to the extent that one can prepare to have a safe place and, and, um, um, and, and to reduce stress uh, would be very important. But of course, that's not always going to be possible. And what do we know about ADHD, for example? ADHD is, you know, most of the risk factors for ADHD are, um, you know, heritable. The environmental risk factors are, um, you know, basically uh, pre and perinatal. So um, what can you do after a child is born to try to mitigate that risk? Well, we can't make it go away completely. And then that risk wouldn't be accounted for specifically by, you know, exposure to stress or an environmental event. What we think is most likely is that there's an interaction of, you know, of genetics and, and environmental exposure and stress and a variety of factors. And that's really the basis of research that will have to be done going forward, things that we're very interested in. And uh, that Dr. Nomura has been really a leader, you know, in, 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 in thinking about. But, you know, for ADHD, you want to have clearly defined rules and, um, and uh, you want to uh, allow kids that are very active to be able to move around a lot. You don't, you want to make things very clear. You don't want to um, uh, present complicated uh, statements. You, you want to make directions very clear. You want to assist in peer interactions. In the case of children who are inattentive, you want to help to engage them in something and draw them in and uh, get them to participate. And uh, you, you, you definitely want to provide structure uh, that they can follow. Another thing I think we should do is, uh, as Jeff mentioned, uh, since you know hurricane, we we pretty much know hurricane is co coming every single year. We should uh, educate pregnant women to understand the risk associated with exposure. Therefore, they don't feel so reserved about putting their need forward. And of course, the priority of uh, looking after women uh, who are pregnant uh, needs to be very high. Um, and, uh, and again, we focused on, you know, a, you know, a natural disaster, a super storm or hurricane like event. Uh, but there are many types of, you know, environmental stressors that could, you know, theoretically impinge on, on, you know, women who are pregnant. Uh, I guess the best you can do is think about which of the things are more likely where you happen to live, right? Because hurricanes are more prevalent in some parts of the country and uh, other kinds of natural disasters are prevalent in other parts of the country. And, and you have to have a plan for managing it if it would come about. And that's really the best you can do. And you have to think about support that you can get both within your family and within your community. And then I think uh, as Dr. Nomura uh, has uh, indicated in, in our paper, um, it's really important for policymakers to think about ways we can make resources available uh, to pregnant women uh, to protect their offspring, um, you, you know, uh, you know, because of exposure to these to these natural disasters.